friends, you're gonna love this one. Recently, I had to go to Staples, you know, just to buy something. Um, as you know, Staples employees wear red shirts, and I was also wearing a red shirt. So, I hear this little voice behind me, uh, excuse me, where's the bathroom? I look over my shoulder, and I see this young lady looking at me and obviously waiting for me to answer. So at first I was a little bit confused, but then I realized, oh, she thinks I work here. <laughs> so then I thought of something. So I asked her, oh, uh, is it for the little need or for the big need? Guys, <laughs> a young lady is not going to tell me that she is about to take a shit. So she says, a uh, little need, obviously. So then I say to her, oh, that's right over there. So now she starts walking away and uh, looks a bit puzzled. <laughs> it's obviously the same thing, uh, unless uh, Staples bathrooms are now equipped with some kind of feminine urinals. The moral of the story is, not everyone that wears a red shirt works at Staples. And this brings me to the old Chinese proverb that says, all that glitters ain't gold, which in turn brings me to today's story. Well, I mean, not the story I already told you, but the actual subject story of this video, which is about counterfeit guitars. Not all guitars are what they appear to be. But guys, before we get any further, let me make one thing clear. I refuse to work on counterfeit guitars. I never work on counterfeit guitars. There's a million reasons for that. But although I decline to work on them, I can still make a YouTube video review of one if I happen to come across one. And recently, someone dropped off a counterfeit Ibanez at the guitar quackery repair shop in my absence. But speaking of guitar quackery, welcome back to the Guitar Quackery YouTube channel where, well, where, where we don't work on counterfeit guitars. But in this case, let me take you to the shop and let's review one. Sometimes guitars get dropped off at the front desk uh, in my absence. So here we have a guitar that, uh, well, it's supposed to be an Ibanez, but it's not. So let's have a closer look at the guitar. We encounter the first problems at the nut. I already removed these two screws. Um, they're top mounted wood screws, which is why we have these two holes here. Um, the nut is made out of some kind of soft metal, which is not the same metal that would be used uh, for Floyd Rose locking nut, uh, which would normally be some kind of hardened steel. This was really soft. Uh, also, as you can see, there are two metal studs showing through this uh, corner. I don't know what that is. It's not supposed to be there. So let's look at the other side. Here we can see these two set screws. Um, well, they're not supposed to be there if we were using wood screws to mount the nut. Uh, these screws would have to be protruding through and uh, they would have to be screwed into the bottom side of the locking nut. But as you can see, we don't see these screws poking through the other side. So let's remove them and see what we find. Well, interestingly, um, this is just uh, decorative. So this screw was not even holding anything they just cut it like that and placed it for decorative purposes. Inside the cavity, we just see some uh, sawdust, nothing more than that. And uh, not surprisingly, the other screw is just the same way. Yeah, so there's nothing there. But this is not where the problems end. In fact, this is where the problems begin if you start 
working on a guitar like that. Because um, if you attempt to do a setup on a guitar like that, you will soon find out that it's impossible to do a good setup <laughs> when things don't even work. So you will have to start fixing things, and in which case you will find yourself doing finishing work on this guitar like they normally would do at a factory. At that point, you have to ask yourself, well, if I'm doing finishing work on this guitar to make it work, uh, am I now officially part of the team that is building this guitar? In which case, you might even be breaking the law because you are finishing the counterfeit product. So this is one reason why I don't mess with counterfeits. Uh, plus, I have enough work anyway, right? So, um, although I don't work on them, as I explained, somebody just dropped it off at the front desk, and here it is. So I just made a video for you, uh, hopefully to convince you that, uh, you know, you shouldn't mess with them either. So let's have a look at the frets. The frets have not been seated all the way. Uh, this will cause some issues on the side of the fretboard because... Uh, there is a little gap, so if the high E string happens to slip a little bit during a solo, it'll get stuck under the fret. I'm not going to show you everything that's wrong with this guitar. I didn't even have time to really look into everything. I'm not really that interested. Uh, but here, I did save one nice little thing for the end. Let's have a look. Let's plug it in. It fits. All right, oh, so why does this happen? Well, if we look at the other side, it becomes obvious. So um, when uh, you install this kind of output jack on an Ibanez, it's supposed to show up on the inside here so that uh, you can secure it with, uh, with a nut, with one of those, uh, but it's, not long enough it isn't that it's not long enough um, it's this cavity here is routed in the wrong place it's not close enough to the edge so it appears that the jack is not even long enough I'm about to bring this review to its conclusion are you ready hold on to your seats here it comes the guitar is absolute garbage so my advice to you is always the same don't buy counterfeits don't eat oh sorry guitar quackery man are you serious hey listen why don't you at least subscribe to this channel before i hang up on you <laughs> thank you this viewer wants to know how does it sound Guys, are, are we seriously going to talk about tone here? Anyway, we're done for the day. But before I let you go, let me share some closing thoughts. As you know, I like to publish informative videos that ultimately benefit you. There are plenty of other YouTube creators that do the same, but I just try to put a different spin on it. As you know, YouTube will recommend videos to you in the future based on what you've liked and what you've subscribed to. So if you want YouTube to accurately recommend this kind of content to you in the future from various content creators, then you should consider subscribing to this channel and you should also click the like button. And if you think that I've earned a coffee, you can also reward me by clicking the link below that says buy me a coffee. If you wish to support this channel financially, you can join the Guitar Quackery Patreon group and you can also buy some Guitar Quackery merch, like red shirts. Oh, <laughs> just be aware of your surroundings if you happen to be wearing one at Staples. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.